To take the derivative of f of x for this example, first again we need to start by thinking about what rule or rules would be required for this example. And as the function is written right now, we have a product rule for the top part, we have a quotient rule as the entire thing, and we have a chain rule for the bottom part. So the chain rule can't be avoided because the chain rule comes from something ugly being underneath a square root and there's really no way to get rid of that fact that it is ugly to a power because we don't have any sort of exponent rules that would allow us to uh, manipulate the square root. So we're stuck with the chain rule. But if we look here at the top again, that um, product that's at the top would not be all that difficult to get rid of. And rather than keeping track of three different rules that were all that all need to happen at once um, to complete this derivative, I think if we could eliminate the product rule, that would definitely help us some. And so we could rewrite f of x. Um, we'll go ahead and rewrite it, the bottom here, as a power. So that would be the factor x cubed uh, minus 27, and that would be raised to the one-half power. Um, but then on the top, we could multiply that out. Um, perhaps you've heard FOIL it out. Um, FOILing is like repeated distributing. We multiply the x through um, the second term. So that would be a 3x squared minus a 4x. And then we go to multiplying the 1 through the second term. So that would be a plus 3x minus 4. Certainly the outer and inner terms um, can be combined because they're both um, terms that have just x. And so we will have uh, 3x squared minus 4x plus 3x will be a minus x overall. And then we have the minus 4. All of that would be over the x cubed minus 27 raised to the 1 half power. And so now we've made a little bit of progress by eliminating the product rule required. But here we would still be stuck with the um, quotient uh, with chain. Now if we're looking um, at additional algebra that could happen, we really could get rid of the quotient rule, but if we did that, we would be still stuck with a power or a product rule then, because we'd have the top there, the 3x squared minus x minus 4, that would be the factor, that if we wanted to take the bottom um, from the quotient and bring that factor up to the top, we'd have x cubed minus 27. Um, raised to now the negative one-half power because I brought it from the bottom. But here this would require product uh, with chain. So in some sense, take your pick. You've got either the product or the quotient rule that you're combining with the chain rule. Now my recommendation is um, to do the quotient rule over the product rule. Um, you end up having less algebra to deal with when you're cleaning up the derivative um, and I've just, my experience is that students tend to do that better. And so that would be my recommendation and that's how I'm going to complete this problem. Problem. So here's what we have from the previous page. Uh, we've rewritten f of x so that it's um, 3x squared minus x minus 4 all over the factor to the 1 half power on the bottom. So we're going to do the quotient uh, with chain here. That's going to be our plan. And so overall, the whole thing is a quotient rule. And so we're going to use the quotient rule here. So we're ready to take the derivative. We say f prime of x equals. And the quotient rule here, I always go ahead and draw my line and I write the bottom squared because otherwise sometimes I work so hard on the top, I forget about the bottom. So my bottom here is x cubed minus 27 to the 1 half power. And we're going to square it. So that's what the bottom is going to be. So now we've got the top for the quotient rule. The quotient rule says uh, the derivative of the top. So we've got ddx of the 3x squared minus x minus 4 times the bottom, which is x cubed minus 27 to the 1 half power. So uh, the derivative of the top times the bottom and then minus, let's extend our line, minus uh, the top which is 3x squared minus x minus 4 times the derivative of the bottom. So we've got the x cubed minus 27 raised to the 1 half. Okay, so now we are ready to start taking the little derivatives that we need 
Um, again, I draw my line and I'm going to go ahead and clean up the bottom. The nice part about the bottom is we've got the one half power squared. So we've got a power to a power and the exponent rules tell us whenever we have power to a power to multiply the powers. So we've got one half times two. So that's really just the um, first power. Um, a Squaring something undoes the square root. So we're looking at the factor x cubed minus 27 on the bottom there. So now for the top. The derivative of the first one is the derivative of a polynomial. And so we just take the derivative term by term using uh, constant multiple rules and power rules. And so we've got the 3x squared that we need the derivative of. So we've got the the 3, that's the constant in front, times the 2 for the power gives us a 6, and then we drop the power by 1 on the x, so we have 6x. Um, we carry 3 with subtraction, and we take the derivative of x, which is 1. Again, we would carry 3 with subtraction, but the derivative of 4 is 0, so we can finish up that derivative. So we've got 6x minus 1 times this factor that we're carrying through. And then we have uh, minus the 3x squared minus x minus 4. And this last derivative here for the top is the one that requires the chain rule. And so the, the, we know that because it's ugly raised to a power. So to complete that derivative, we bring the power down, 1 half. Uh, the factor remains the same, x cubed minus 27. And we subtract 1 from the old power. So 1 half minus 1 would give us the new power, negative a half. And we complete the chain rule by taking the derivative of the um, inside part. So that derivative there would be the derivative of x cubed minus 27. So we'll do that term by term again, and we would see that the derivative of x cubed is a power rule, so it would be 3x squared. We bring the 3 down, that was the power, 3 down. And then we drop the power by 1, so that would be our x squared. Then we have uh, minus the derivative of 27, but again, that's a constant, so the derivative is 0, and that finishes our derivative off. We can do just a shade bit of uh, cleanup that would make, um, make this look slightly nicer anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we would have the 6x minus 1 times the x cubed minus 27 to the 1 half. Let's just leave that as is. But then uh, we've got this, um, everything that follows the subtraction sign there is multiplied together. So we will take a minus and we'll take that factor, 3x squared minus x minus 4. We don't really want to foil things out and work too hard, but what I do think would make things a little bit nicer is taking that um, simple term negative, or the simple, it's not really a term, the simple um, number there in front of the one half and multiplying it by this monomial because it has no addition and subtraction there. We could combine those two together um, and that would make things look a little bit nicer. So when we do combine those together, that would be a uh, one half times three x squared. Perhaps that would just be a three halves x squared. That would look relatively nice. And then we'd have the x cubed minus 27 raised to the negative a half power. That's not too bad. And we can have that all over uh, the denominator, which is uh, the x cubed minus 27 to complete our answer.